All right, well, let's dive into our customer panel. The theme of this panel is all around building high performance teams. And like I said earlier, you know, we have such an amazing community of high performance firm owners, people that are in the trenches every single day that are making the hiring decisions, the firing decisions, they're figuring out pricing, they're figuring out workflow, they're figuring out tech, that we would just love to elevate their expertise. Uh, and what we did today is we helped bring together a couple questions. But I want to introduce, you know, we have Ruben Cruz. He's the CEO of Crew Alliance. We have Jody Grunden. He's the CEO of Summit CPA. And we have Amanda Evans, the CEO at Tight Ship Bookkeeping. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and just quickly exit out my screen. I'm going to make sure you could see all of these wonderful people, uh, Jody, Ruben, uh, Amanda, if you can um, uh, show your video. If not, or if when you show it, you show up as a blue Hulk, that's okay too. Uh, we're working with Zoom today. We'll we'll talk to them later. But hey, it's good to see you. I think um, we have Amanda jumping in here as well. Um, bu -bu -bum. Amanda, Amanda, uh, I, I could see you. I can't hear you. Um, so while we're doing this, Jody, just want to give yeah, a quick high level intro. Start, sorry, uh, I'm oh, okay. here. I okay. can't start my video. Somehow I have to. No it worries. Keeps giving me an error. I'm, I'm going to blame the blue background that I'm trying to use all day. And it's just showing up as like blue dentures, blue eyes, you know, sunglasses. If everybody, anybody attended the Cloud Accounting Summit in April, you know, sunglasses are so simple compared to green screens, right? So I might have to bring back the sunglasses, get rid of the green, green screens. So I think that's the real, that's the real learning from today. If people want to jot that down, sunglasses are greater than green screens. Uh, but let's do a quick intro. Then we're going to go straight into the questions. Jody, you want to give a quick a uh, high level, uh, a summary, one minute summary on Summit CPA, what you do and who you are. Yeah, sure can. I'm the uh, CEO of Summit CPA Group. We are a completely remote uh, CPA firm. We've got about 50 employees spread throughout the United States, and we've got a few um, in uh, India and some other countries. Uh, we work primarily virtual CFO services. We've been doing that since 2004 uh, on both the back end accounting as well as the uh, a strategic uh, CFO. We've been using Jetpack for some time and it's uh, been invaluable for us. Uh, it saves us about uh, almost a quarter million dollars a year in uh, ROI. So huge savings and definitely appreciate you having, having me on, David. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for being on. Amanda, could you give us a high level overview, one minute overview, who you are? Tell us a little bit about the firm. Yeah, sure. So I'm Amanda Evans. I own Tight Chip Bookkeeping. Um, we are a firm, virtual bookkeeping firm here in Florida, um, but we have clients throughout the nation. Most of my employees, however, are, are in Florida. Um, Tight Chip has been open for almost three years. However, I've been bookkeeping for over 20 years um, and we just continue to grow. Awesome. And Ruben, quick overview of who you are, what you do. Absolutely. Hey, guys, everybody. Ruben Cruz here, uh, CPA, CEO of Crew Alliance. Uh, we're based out of Tampa, Florida. So I'm curious to see where Amanda, where exactly you're at. Uh, but yeah, all oh, beautiful. Well, we got to connect. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're based out of Tampa, Florida. We have clients all across the U.S. as well, uh, predominantly in the Florida uh, state. But um, we focus a lot on, on the client accounting services, full suite accounting services, you know, the bookkeeping, accounting, the payroll, the accounts payable. Um, some higher level services as well, like KPIs and benchmarking and projections and that CFO level that Jody was talking about a second ago. Um, that's a little bit about my firm. We've been in business for a little over five years now. Um, so yeah, just happy to be here and excited to uh, talk with you guys. Awesome. And literally what just happened, by the way, is like why we want to make more connections, more panels, bigger community. It's like, oh, you're in Tampa? I'm in Tampa. Oh, cool. Like, I didn't know we live a quarter of a mile from each other, like whatever it is. So uh, we're, we, we just love this community. We're really excited to, to do more things like this. But uh, let's get into the nuts and bolts of, of today. And uh, we'll start with probably one of the hardest questions. You know, some people give you softballs to start out. You know, it's 1 p.m. I just drank a cup of coffee. We're going straight to hardball. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, here's the question is, you know, how do you know when it is time to let somebody go versus train them up, give them another chance? We, you know, we have to deal with this all the time. Uh, we'll give roughly one minute per, per answer just to be respectful of everybody's uh, time. And we'll make sure we can get through a couple more. But whoever wants to dive in uh, first, uh, let me know. 
I'll go ahead and tackle that. We, um, we, we have a very transparent uh, uh, culture. And so we're constantly giving feedback. We have 360 reviews every, uh, with somebody starting out, we have one every two weeks. And so we have one every two weeks through the uh, 90 day probationary period. And then it's every six months after that. So uh, we're always asking, you know, hey, what's going right? What's wrong? And what do we need to continue doing? So it's like a start, stop and continue, which has really uh, been huge. So throughout that whole process, we are very candid with uh, what we talk about. And so people know, from the very beginning, hey, I need to improve on this, or I need this isn't going as well, and so they're never ever surprised when it comes to the uh, the, the the annual review where we where we're meeting with them, kind of going through things because we've we've talked and discussed you know all their issues and all their pauses and you know everything throughout the entire thing. So it's just a very transparent. Uh, it, it's very um, we, we it's very it's it's very. I guess we, we, it's definitely intentional, I guess what I'm saying there, uh, which is really huge. And it's really huge to have that in a distributed environment or a remote environment, because you have to be, you don't get a chance to bump into each other in the hallway. So you've got to be um, very deliberate in, in your review process. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Love the idea of no surprises. Uh, Ruben or Amanda, you want to dive in? Yeah, I'll go ahead and chime in there. Um, kind of like what Jody was saying, I, I agree with that. I am a firm believer in firing fast and, and hiring slow. Um, and I've learned that the hard way, actually. Um, but I think beforehand, you really, um, I think laying out the expectations is the most important thing as an employer, right? And making sure that the employee knows exactly what's expected, uh, timeframes of getting jobs done, issues that might come up and how they communicate that to higher ups or whatnot. Um, I think that's the big thing. So expectations are the big thing. Um, but when it's time to let somebody go, if they're not meeting those expectations, right? Those ex expectations and uh, have been communicated multiple times and they're still not meeting that or progressing or getting better, then I think it's time to have that serious conversation and, you know, figure out some kind of extra strategy for them and, and bringing somebody in to replace them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Amanda, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So I'm a big fan of CYA. Um, so throughout employing my employees, I'm constantly documenting, they know their expectations. Um, I'm providing them additional training if they're, they, they have any shortfalls, if they still cannot meet the mark. Um, the glory of Jetpack, too, is, is you can see timeliness of tasks and if they're doing it on time, um, which helps, you know, documentation of whether or not you want to keep an employee on hand and you, you have empirical data right there. Um, so, you know, documentation if they're still not um, keeping up with, with expectations, you've given them the, the opportunity to train, you've given them additional resources, and they still, after you know a quarter or so, aren't, aren't meeting expectations, I'm gonna cut ties and, and move on and find somebody else. Yeah, and you said CYA, what, what does that stand for? I actually, I literally don't know. I don't know if there's a swear word in there, so we could do the there first. Is. Oh, is there? Oh. <laughs> Cover your um, oh, okay. Yeah. CYB for, for everybody with kids at home. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I had to ask, but I was like, oh, I bet there's a swear. You know, when it comes uh, these, these acronyms around hiring, firing always seem to have a swear word <laughs> associated with them. Um, and by the way, if people are engaging right now, if you have, if you have follow up questions to this, type it into the, to, to the question box so we could surface it back here as well. Okay, we'll dive into the next one. Uh, and, and it's pretty similar to what you know, you all were talking about in some ways, you know, um, we could take it from somebody that's not performant or somebody that is, you want to level them up, but how do you go about uh, training or coaching uh, the team to do things kind of your way or the way that your firm, you know, aspires to, and, uh, you know, maybe hidden in this question as well is like, where do you find the time to do this, right? And how do you, how do you, you know, how do you even find the time to build this out? So whoever wants to, to dive in first, take it away. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go ahead and dive into this one. Um, I'm a firm believer, believer in leveraging technology. Um, so video has been, saved me a lot of time in training, right? Continue to build up a database of how we do things, how we reconcile the client's accounts, um, or some of those specific issues or specific items per client that could be communicated via, uh, via video rather than me having to explain that to the staff over and over. So I use Loom. I actually use, um, so Loom is a big, uh, big one for us and we capture the video and we document it into Jetpack workflow within the task, um, within the activity and notes of the client too. So staff, whether we have a contractor coming in, 
they could just go there and, and uh, leverage what we have already documented how to get things done. So that's, that's how we train them. Um, and I find that that helps us stay, uh, helps me leverage my time alone. Yeah. So a uh, quick, quick, quick technical question. What's your favorite video? We have our, we have our preference. What's, what's your favorite one to, to use when uh, you're, you're documenting or, or sending out videos to your team? You, you, as far as platform? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Loom. Loom yeah. is, is my, it's easy, right? It's a user, very user friendly. It's pretty, uh, I think they just changed it up. Now they're allowing the free version. I think it's only five minutes up to video and you have to pay for anything more, but uh, kudos to them. They have a good product. So it's, it works. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Jody or Amanda. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say exactly the same thing that Ruben does. I use Loom um, to document all my procedures in reconciliations, um, data processing, uh, data entry. It's, it's all there client specific. So what I do is I handle all of my accounts for their first quarter and then I pass it off to my staff members. And while I'm doing that for that first quarter, um, I, I'm recording everything I do. And it's, you know, in the beginning, it was kind of weird where you're recording to no one or the imaginary employees that you might have, but I'm a huge fan of processes and procedures, um, documenting them, setting up your standards. Um, your way also comes to uh, branding, knowing that your employees have a copy of your branding guide, um, what font to use, how to format reports, how to um, communicate with your clients. Are you more casual? Are you more... Um, uh, formal, uh, what method of communication do you use? That kind of thing is is in done with both Loom and sharing on Slack. I have a Slack channel specific for um, kind of onboarding type stuff and, and brand specific stuff. So then they can go back and reference it. But Loom is definitely my uh, how to do things method yeah. of communication. I love it. Yeah. And the, and the style guide is so important, right? Do you say CYA or can you just say it out? Can you say the whole darn thing out loud to a client, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you you kind of want to know that, you know, across the, you know, certainly as you have more people. Uh, Jody, what's your take on this? Yeah, I completely agree with both uh, Ruben and Amanda. We uh, videotape everything for internal processes. Everything's stored right there in, in Jetpack for us. But then we take it even one step further back and we've actually videotaped and uh, put together a 15 uh, module course for each of our employees to go through, which kind of talks about all aspects of the company from marketing to how we make money to you name it. So it's again, very intuitive. So they understand, Hey, the why behind everything, not just simply, you know, diving in and doing it. And then uh, during the uh, first, you know, like I'd say the first, you know, six months, you know, we, well, even further than that, we always have one of our, uh, we call senior level accounts or new people. They're actually in all the client meetings with our CFOs or higher level people. So they're hearing what our CFO says, how they talk about it, um, what, what they're doing, and, and then it just making them more comfortable because all of, our, all of our employees are client facing, which is really important. And that's not a trait that's real common in the accounting industry. And so we wanna make sure that you know, they're hearing how, how it's being done. So when it's their turn to uh, hop up to the plate and become it, go to that next level, they've, they've already been through it and it's not a, not a big thing for them. Yeah, I mean, the theme I'm hearing is the more time you spend on the onboarding end of things, the easier the rest of the tenure becomes for that person. They're set up for to be sure. successful. They're less frustrated. They understand. I mean, Jody, for you, for this for this course, mm -hmm. uh, what was your hiring velocity or at what scale of the firm do you say, okay, we really should just put together the 15 module walkthrough soup to nuts of everything that we're doing? Yeah, um, well, we're growing extremely fast. You know, we... Uh, in 2011, we were 18 people. Now we're 50 people. And so we're growing at a, a pace of about five to eight people a year, roughly. And I wish we'd have done it, you know, three, four years ago. I really do. Because we've lost a lot of good people because we didn't have that in place, you know, because we just grew too fast. You know, the, a, little, a little chaotic, you know, that type of thing. And so I would say the sooner you can do it, the better. And it doesn't have to be a 15 module course. It can be a two module course. You can add a module a year or a module every six months, you know, or whatever. But I, I think you really need to do it just so that they can kind of sit through, listen to it and hear, hear how things are working. Um, Cause it, it's definitely invaluable for the teammates for, for sure. Yeah, that's really cool. And, and it's such a theme of today, whether it's Zapier or, or even with, with the things with onboarding, sometimes you need to slow down to speed up. I think it's, you know, um, yeah. which is really neat. Um, all right, we'll dive into a very tactical question. Question three, which is how do you run 
your one-on-ones or your individual check-ins? Are they weekly? Are they bi-weekly? Are they monthly? Are they quarterly? Do you not do them at all? What do you talk about? How do you check in uh, at, at the one-on-one level with your team? Um, uh, we'll, we'll kick it off with Amanda. Yeah. So for me, most of my employees are virtual. Some of them I've actually never met before. Um, So my check-ins are generally monthly at the time where I am reviewing the financials. So once my clients have, or once my bookkeepers have done the reconciliations, I then review the financials before they go out to the clients. At that point in time is when I might find any errors or mistakes that they may have. And and we check in or even, you know, right before my review, I check in and say, hey, what, what, what do we look like on this? reconciliation? What are we waiting on? Do I need to contact the client? Are they not getting you what you need to, you know, the statements you need to do the reconciliations or whatever? Um, so so we are pretty informal. I communicate on a day-to-day basis through Slack with my um, employees. So I know where they are on each and if there's something that I need to, to help them with or something they need my help with, they, they can just poke me there. Cool. Ruben or Jody, what's your approach to it? Yeah, we meet with uh, we meet with our team uh, a lot more frequently. There's a lot more touches. Uh, usually, we meet with clients weekly, or we're meeting with them monthly at the, at the latest. And so, our, our CFOs meet with the uh, our accounting team at least once a week. And so, at least once a week, and, and often twice a week, depending upon how many clients they're working with each other with. And so, that's just kind of the one on ones. Then we also have team meetings once a week, where we're again we're completely virtual, uh, like Amanda. So we. Uh, do everything through uh, video conferencing. We'll meet for half an hour and just uh, just say, hey, and like Amanda, I've not met half my team. Um, and that's kind of how that's always been going outside of the team retreats uh, that we do once a year. Uh, so I, I would say, you know, definitely one-on-one um, at least twice a week with the CFOs. Again, they're the, the direct reports. And then uh, we meet uh, at least once a week on the, uh, for the team. Yeah, on those, on those weeklies, what do you, what's the rough agenda look like when they are doing? So when we do a, a weekly uh, with the, uh, with the CFOs, we're going over, Hey, what's gone right uh, with, with the clients, you know, where they're at on pace and then what's going wrong. So what do we need to fix? And so, uh, and, and those are done within uh, what we call them pods. So it's uh, two, three senior accountants. So we're kind of hearing a cross section of multiple, you know, you know, voicing their, you know, concerns or, or, you know, correct, you know, what, what, you know, everything's going, you know, what, what's going on so that they can kind of share and use it as a learning experience. So if someone's having the same issue, all three of them are having the same issue, then we can address that even at, the, at a higher level. So again, um, just the, you know, what's going right, what's going wrong and what needs improvement. Cool. Ruben, what's your take on it? Yeah, so our cadence is, is pretty similar as well as far as communication. Uh, we do leverage Slack, so we're constantly communicating. We have different channels in Slack that we use uh, for communications. But in addition to that, something we do every week is we have a weekly huddle, and that happens on Monday. It's actually between 20 to 30 minutes, and it's just kind of a high overview of what's on the plate, what are some things we didn't get done last week, what are high priority items, what are some issues, et cetera, right? Whatever things that we should be talking about for that given week. Um, and then we do a daily huddle and a daily huddle is just is super, super, super high, high level. Um, and then if there's anything that needs to be discussed, then we'll just have a breakout session, put in a uh, lot it to a separate time on the one-on-one's uh, calendar and to discuss those specifics at that point. But so we're in constant communication uh, to answer that question. Cool, awesome. Um... Great. How do you know, this is kind of on the other end of the spectrum. I mean, we talked about this event where, you know, you never want to get to, you never hire somebody right, getting ready to fire them, right? You probably wouldn't hire them in that case. But let's say you hired somebody, they're doing really well. How do you know when is the right time to promote them or level them up versus maybe they're not ready for it? Uh, whoever wants to dive in first, take it away. Yeah, I think it's I think it's important on this one to identify just because someone's doing really well doesn't necessarily mean they want to be promoted up. You know, you have to, you know, you, you've got those rock stars out there, the people that are just solid and they just want to do their day-to-day stuff. And that's it. Uh, if you promote those people early, or if you promote them at all, a lot of times you might lose them because again, they get out of their comfort zone and that's not something that they're, they're truly interested in. Uh, so you have to look for what we call the superstars and the superstars are the ones that are, they can't wait for the next thing. You know, they're, they're looking for that next promotion. They're looking for that. And they're always talking about it. You know, Hey, how do I get here? What's the path to get here? And you can identify those people and you want to really focus on those people uh, on the promotion level. And then again, you're looking for the no stars also on your team. You know, the no stars, you know, are the ones that, 
that you know shouldn't be there anyways and you need to make sure you get rid of those quickly like ruben said you know be quick to fire and get you know and to better your team because your team will appreciate that the most uh so again identifying the superstars is the big key having your 360 reviews on a constant basis is huge you know that helps them really identify their weaknesses and their strengths and uh, you know you just can continue looking for that person so it's again it's an ongoing process and uh, once you find that person, you know, just keep working up, working with them and trying to, to, you know, get them to that next level. Yeah. Quick follow up question, Jody. So when you're doing these reviews, is that individual saying this is the specific title I want or are they just they are they just expressing that they're looking for more and more responsibility or do they typically come to the table saying I want to be a, a team lead or you know, yeah. client work or whatever. Yeah, great, great question. So uh, we're, transpa- we're, we're extremely transparent with our entire pay structure and, and tre- extremely transparent in the way that we advance. So when we come on, all of our people know wh- how much everybody else makes, which is kind of kind of unique and probably scares half the people in this con- conversation. Uh, but everything is, is built up and saying, hey, here's the, here's the tier that you're at. Here's the next three tiers you've gotten until you get to your next promotion or to, you know, here's your next promotion. Here's what that's going to look like. Here's your, here's when you're going to take on more responsibilities. Here's when you're going to dead end. And at that point you can either make a decision. Hey, are you, are you cool with that? Are you that rock star that I mentioned there? Are you the superstar that wants to, to advance up? And then here's how you do that once you advance up. So we make it very, very transparent for everyone. So they know exactly where they're at. And so they're always looking for the ability to know, Hey, how can I get more client contact or how can I, you know, what, what am I doing right or wrong? You know, and they're just kind of building that confidence as they go. So it's, you know, the, the transparency is huge with our organization. Very cool. Uh, Ruben or Amanda, what's your approach to this? Yeah. So I look at their basic personalities. Um, if they're always looking for a way to f- make my business more efficient, whether it's for diff- through different technology or streamlining to me, a supervisor or somebody that's ready for promotion is somebody that is willing to make tight ship more profitable through efficiency. Um, and that person ultimately is going to be the team player. They're going to be a good mentor. They obviously know how to um, train and help staff. Um, so that's my main thing that I look for is, are they willing to put in the effort and come to me and be like, Hey, Amanda, this isn't quite working. Can we try it this way? Um, those are the people that I really want to promote and keep on team. Yeah, I agree with both, um, what Amanda said and Jody said, uh, two things I also add to it is responsibility and ownership, right? Once I feel like the team member, the staff can take ownership and responsibility of a task or a job, whether they do a good job or a bad job or whatever it is, they could take ownership and responsibility, figure out how to deal with the issues, figure out how to deal with um, a client issue or something, you know, putting out a fire or whatever it may be, then I know they're ready to kind of take that next step uh, to get higher or to get promoted. So that I would boil it down to those two things as well, responsibility and ownership of, of the task. Love it. Makes perfect sense. We'll go into the final question. We have one minute. So this is like the action packed question right here. Um, uh, And this one is probably the hardest question. It's probably the longest question, but what have you found to be one or two effective ways to determine if somebody is the right fit before you actually make them the offer, right? So how do you take, you know, you don't, you you could save your, the headache on the back end from firing if you maybe do one or two things on the front end during hiring. So what's one or two things you found effective in the hiring process to increase your rate of hiring the right candidate? I'd say testing. Yeah, you know, we do we do the Colby test, we do the EQI test, and then after we're hired, we do a disc assessment. So we do a lot of testing. Uh, Colby tells them, "Hey, are you the right? You know, what's your comfort zone? Where you're going to fit in you know, as an accountant, as a as a uh, manager? You know, what what is your comfort zone there? And then the EQI is your emotional intelligence. That's really going to tell you how you communicate with others. Uh, we found emotional intelligence was is the key test uh, to determine whether or not they're going to be the individual that really promotes through the organization. Awesome. Ruben or Amanda? Yeah, I think the testing is huge. Even testing where you're bringing them into the office or you're giving them assigned task. You're not necessarily hiring them at that point. You say, hey, look, we're going to give you a week trial. We're going to give you a two-week trial. We're going to give you some tasks, and we want to see how you do with it, what kind of questions you have, and see if they're just a good fit. You know, Culture is a big thing, too. right? I like to hire people that I would like to hang out with after hours mm-hmm. as well. It just makes it a lot easier, and 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 those uh, the when it gets tough, the busy seasons makes it a lot easier if you work with people you like to work with. 
Awesome. Well, I know there's probably many, many, many more questions we can go through. So if folks want to reach out and say thank you, connect with you on social, reach out to your website, whatever it may be, what is the best way for our community to connect with you all? Uh, just Jody, J-O-D-Y at summitcpa.net. Just uh, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to hop on a call with anybody. And um, I can, I'll can i go ahead and share an email, my calendar invite with you during the email, and you can uh, hop on my schedule anytime. Likewise, uh, Ruben at crewlines.com. You can find me on social media too as well, my, my, uh, my name. Anyway, just reach out to me. I'll be happy to connect. Um, email Amanda at tightshipbookkeeping.com or PM me on Instagram at tightshipbookkeeping. Um, also visit my website, fill out a lead or a contact form and I'm quick to respond.